Let's get straight to the point. Yesterday, I published this documentary, Sex and Shivalingam, wherein I tried to bring forward the physical as well as philosophical meaning of Shivalingam. Ever since then, I'm getting a lot of mails and DMs which are downright abusive, which I don't care. But what I do care is about people's understanding of the truth. That is the reason I'm just trying to make an addendum to the previous documentary that I published yesterday. So you can count this as part two of yesterday's documentary. But in case if you did not watch the the original documentary, the first one, this video does not make any sense to you because this is going to be just a lightweight addendum to the actual documentary. And maybe I was a bit rude with the pin comment message that I left uh, below the documentary of yesterday. And if you feel that I was rude, I'm sorry for that. But only that. I stand by by the documentary that I produced and nothing changes in that as everything is pixel perfect in the documentary. Let me tell you something very important. I'm never concerned about how many views my video is going to get or how many people would give me positive comments or how many people will give me negative comments. It is least of my concerns. And I'll tell you why. This sounds arrogant, but let me explain you why. The moment I become hungry for views or subscribers or for the money from YouTube or from the positive comments, or at the same time feel bad about the negative comments. When all these things enter into me, it totally pollutes the content of Project Shivoham. Because it's an inseparable package. If I feel good about a positive comment, naturally I should also feel bad about a negative comment. Then slowly I will start making content which people would love to watch or what makes people happy or what flames up your passion or what satisfies your ego. The moment I start making that kind of content, with eyes closed, I'll get a lot of views as well as money from YouTube. But that's not and never and never will be the objective of Project Shivoham. The only way I pay my respect to each and every viewer of Project Shivoham is by bringing the truth in its purest form. So enough of talking, I think let's get back to the sex and shivalingam part two. So the bone of contention from people who did not like the documentary was, I said that Shivalingam is a union of the male genital organ of Mahadev and the female genital organ of Ma Parvati, both philosophically as well as physically. And uh, Shivalingam represents the source of creation of the nature, cosmos and everything. So that's the sum and substance of the previous documentary. And I've given clear cut references from Linga Puranam, Bhagavad Gita, Siva Maha Puranam and many other scriptures. The essence of all the negative comments that I received is, in simple words, if I have to put it that way, I relied on English translations which were intended to malign Sanatana Dharma by somebody who was written and these English translations are not true and Shivalingam does not represent the genitals of Shakti and Shiva. Hence, the documentary that I produced was absolute garbage, etc, etc. So basically, this slokam, where it, it says that how Shiva was cursed by the rishis in Daruvana and then this lokam, which essentially talks about how Ma Parvati manifested herself into Yoni and Banam. So these are the two slokas which are like quite contentious and uh yeah, so that's where it all started. So let me walk you through the background work that I did for this documentary. So to start with English language, I relied on JL Shastri's Siva Puranam and I clearly cut out the snippets from this book and I paste for these two slokas. I'll not repeat them since you already know the context, assuming that you've already watched the previous documentary. So pause it and read for yourself. And people who kind of sent me all the hate comments and all, so they were saying that JL Shastri's Siva Puranam is absolutely, yeah, it's an English translation intended to malign Sanatana Dharma and Bhagavan Shiva, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's park that argument. But for the moment, take a reading of the snippets directly from the book. Let's move forward. Moving to another source of my research, Telugu. Now here I have to say something. I speak English, Telugu, Hindi. I can read and understand Samskritam. I can read and understand Kannada. So I'm blessed with five languages. And Telugu is my mother tongue. And for those of you who are not that familiar, Telugu is one of the few languages which is very, very close to Samskritam. It's like almost 80% of Telugu comes straight from Samskritam. And so is Kannada as well, these two languages. Now coming to the source of my reading in Telugu, the Telugu version of Siva Puranam is something that is published by Ramakrishna Mission. They are quite reliable source. You can stop this video here, pull out your phone, open Google Translate, translate it from Telugu to English, point your camera to the screen and then read the translation for yourself. And if you could not, let me paraphrase that in less than a minute. Let me read from the first block. Munulu Siva Bhaktini, Munipatnula Pati Vrityani, Parikshim Paninchi, Parameswarud Digambarudai, Virupiai, Sakshat Karinchi, Hastamto Tana Lingani Dharinchi, 
కొన్ని దివ్య లీలలను ప్రదర్శించాడు ద ట్రాన్స్లేషన్ ఇస్ శివ వాంటెడ్ టు టెస్ ద డివోషన్ ఆఫ్ ద రిషీస్ అండ్ దర్ వైఫ్స్ ఇన్ ద దారువన అండ్ హీ కేమ్ డౌన్ ఇన్ ద ఫార్మ్ ఆఫ్ అ దిగంబర అండ్ హెల్డ్ హిస్ మేల్ జెనటల్ ఆర్గన్ ఇన్ హిస్ హ్యాండ్ మూవింగ్ టు ద సెకండ్ బ్లాక్ నౌ రీడింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద సెకండ్ బ్లాక్ ఓ దిగంబర అవధూత నీ ప్రవర్తన సనాతనమైన వేద మార్గానికి విరుద్ధంగా ఉంది లింగం ఉన్న పురుషుడు సిగ్గుపడి బట్టచే దానిని ఆచ్ఛాదించుకుంటాడు లజ్జావిహీనుడై వస్త్ర పరిత్యాగం చేసిన నీకు లింగంతో పనేమిటి నీ లింగం తక్షణమే తెగి నేలపడుగాక in the translation is the rishi's cursed shiva who is in the form of avadhuta that may his genital organ fall down onto the earth due to his hideous actions in the daruvana now moving on to the third block rushulu parvati parameshwaralanu prarthinchaga jagannatha aina parvati yoni roopamlo aavirbhavinchi aa tejo lingaanni dharinchindi in the translation is when the rishi sought refuge in ma parvati she took a manifestation of a yoni or a female genital organ and eventually stabilized the lingam of mahadev so this is what is written in the telugu shiva mahapuranam published by ramakrishna mission one of the very very reliable sources of the books about sanatana dharma besides gita press then comes the third resource of my reading and research that is shiva mahapuranam published by geeta press one of the best reliable sources of the scriptures of sanatana dharma across bharat those of you who can read hindi just pause it and read and for those of you who don't understand hindi let me paraphrase that i'm reading from the first block vedigambar bhasma roop bhushan se vibhushit tadha maha tejasvi bhagavan shankar hath me in the brackets tejomaya lingam ko dharan kar vichitra leela karne lage the meaning and essence of these words are exactly the same like it was in english as well as in telugu where bhagavan shiva came down in the avatar of a digambar and held his genital organ with his hand however in geeta press it was written in a very polite manner which is essentially creating people to understand it in a slightly different way i'll explain why if you just take a look at the slokam which is on the left side with the number 10 the word tejasvi is given only once digambaroti tejasvi it was only given once in the slokam and in their paraphrasing or in the translation ve digambar bhasma roop bhushan se vibhushit tada maha tejasvi bhagwan shankar so the word tejasvi is already attributed and consumed for ex explaining maha tejasvi bhagwan shankar then how come another word tejasvi comes in the brackets before lingonk the point is geeta press is not wrong in the translation however they try to do it in a very polite and decent way saying that shankar hath me tejomai lingonk and people are mistaken this tejomai ling to be saying that he appeared with another shivaling in his hand which is radiating but that is wrong because the word tejasvi is already used to explain that shiva himself is tejasvi it's not the ling however giving tejomai in the brackets before lingonko is not wrong because tejasvi in sanskritam or tejas in sanskritam has two meanings one is radiation of light agni so on and so forth comes in that connotation second one tejasvi also means semen the reproductory semen is also called as tejas so when you say tejomai ling it can mean both and in this context since the tejomai word is given only once in the slokam to explain that digambara was tejas that is already consumed and in the one in the second brackets they subtly gave it tejomai ling and did not elaborate as a biological organ i could understand they tried to deal it in a polite manner which is absolutely correct and same is the case with the third block when ma parvati is elaborated they did not even translate the word yoni roopa into simpler hindi words they just used the same word exactly like in sanskritam saying that yoni roopa again which i understand that they decided to deal it a bit more subtly and politely which is absolutely fine then i also switched to the prose version of shiva puranam printed by geeta press there this chapter is absolutely not present at all in that book bottom line is the english and telugu translations were very direct while the hindi translation of geeta press it is not wrong but they were so very polite in the elaboration let's move on moving to my fourth source of my reading and research shiva puranam written in kannada way back in 1945 so that's almost more than 80 years old and this was the oldest of all my sources that i relied on for this documentary the jl shastri shiva puranam the one published by ramakrishna mission in telugu geeta press shiva puranam everything came after this 
for those of you who can read and understand kannada pause it and read for yourself i gave the exact slokas which i've been discussing for the last couple of minutes in this documentary as well as the previous one and for those of you who don't understand kannada pull out your smartphone unfortunately i i'm not good at paraphrasing in kannada but i can just read and understand so i'll not be able to do that but yeah you have your smartphone and google does the job in this shiva puranam also it is very clearly given that bhagwan shiva was in the form of a digambara and he is holding his genital organ with the hand and then the rishi is cursed and ma parvati took the form of a yoni which is a female genital organ and eventually their union became a shivalingam this is typically my approach for research and reading i rely on all these five languages english telugu hindi samskritam and kannada i reconcile all my sources transversely and then produce the documentaries and this is the reason i will not produce content in bulk because it takes time to do the research besides my profession and all other aspects but the reason i am walking you through all this is if someone is saying that shivalingam is not a union of a shiva and shakti genital organs then that person on what basis he or she is doing or saying let's ask this common sensical question anyway it's not over let's move forward i want to still say something more few years back in varanasi i got an opportunity to closely watch the entire pratishta of a shivalingam and this is a picture that i personally took with my phone the lingam and yoni as you can see here there will be a lot of rituals that are done separately for both these parts of the shivalingam and at the time of pratishta that is when they are made together as one continuous monolith shivalingam and the mantras that are used during this process are essentially from agama shastras besides the vedas and there is one very important mantram from kamika agama shastram which is recited during the pratishta of this shivalingam उमाई भागरूपिण्यई लिंगरूपधराय च शंकराय नमस्तुभ्यम इति स्तुत्वा नुमोदय च दिस इज फ्रॉम कामिकागम शास्त्रम उत्तर भागम 20th अध्यायम 37th श्लोकम कामिकागम शास्त्रम लाइक आई सेड इन द अर्लियर डॉक्यूमेंट्री इट इज द मोस्ट अथॉरिटेटिव साईवागम शास्त्रम अकॉर्डिंग टू व्हिच a shivalingam would be constructed and the prana pratishta and everything related to a shivalingam physically is crafted as per the kamigagama shastra the translation of this lokam is amma uma devi you appear in the form of a bhaga bhaga or bhagam here the word bhaga means part or organ and it goes on o lord shankara you appear in the form of a linga again a male genital organ salutations to both of you so to the two parts of the shivalingam the yoni and the lingam the rituals are performed to both yoni and lingam before the pratishta separately and these are the mantras that are used in that process i don't have to explain it it's quite clear whether you like it or not this is the truth what are you trying to run away from if you open and read kamikagama shastram then you will get to know throughout the kamikagama shastram lingam and yoni both are worshiped independently and then the pratishta happens according to the vedic rituals forget about puranas if you say that okay puranas are like they are prakshipt and then they are cooked up stories and all this is a living sampradaya for pratishta of any shivalingam in anywhere in the world as we speak these are the mantras that would always be used now what do you explain for these if you cannot handle the truth that's your problem Let me further simplify this. I really really want each and every one of us to know the truth about Shivalingam because it holds an incredible amount of spiritual wealth and philosophical wealth that could be for your betterment. That is the reason I am doing all these things. Not into getting to fill the arguments and you know what. Okay, there are three manifestations of Shiva. Nataraja Swami, Shivalingam, Ardhanari Swar Swarupam. Nataraja Swami at the outset appears like only Shiva in a dancing form, but it is not correct. Nataraja Swami inherently is also an ardhanarishwara swarupam and that is quite clear in the earrings that he wears for the right ear he wears a makara kundalam which is typically meant for men and for the left ear he wears only kundalam which is meant for women this is where the secret is hidden for nataraja swami that it's not shiva alone but it is a dancing form of both shiva and parvati inseparably blended into one figure so nataraja swami is a culmination of both shiva and shakti and coming to ardhanarishwara swarupam it is full on the right half of Ardhanarishwara is Shiva and the left half is Shakti and coming to Shivalingam here the manifestation is given in the format of a lingam and a yoni the confluence of a lingam and yoni that moment of creation 
is manifested in the form of a Shiva Linga. Now the commonality between all these three manifestations is Shiva and Shakti are inseparable. My simple straight question is when you think about Nataraja Swami, none of the objectionable aspects come into mind. And when you think about Ardhanari Swarupam, none of the objectionable aspects come to your mind. But we are talking about Shiva Lingam, suddenly how it becomes a bit more disrespectful and lustful and uh, I don't know what. Come on guys, this is the philosophy of Shiva and Shakti, whether you like it or not. I can just make a video saying that Shiva Lingam is not a genital organ, it is some form of Shakti and Shiva and fluffy arguments. I can just do whatever I want and gain some views and do whatever stuff I want on YouTube. End of the day, it's a garbage pile. I want you to learn the truth. That is the reason I'm taking my time and effort you to bring again and again and again. And of the hundred documentaries that I've made till now, not a single documentary, I left it out without proper references. Every Samskritam Slokam has a specific reference. The only reason I do that is people will take interest to read it and know the truth for themselves. And don't believe in the jargon of YouTube videos. I'll be more happy if you just watch one video of mine and go back and do your own research with the references that I could provide versus you continuously binge on the videos of Project Shiva Home. I don't need that. Anyways, coming back, this is the truth. Jagatah Pitarav Vande Parvati Parameswarav. That's what a Shivalingam is all about, whether you like it or not. And that's the end of it. And I want to conclude this with the words of Bhishma Charya. Satyadapi hitam bhavet satya jnanam tu dushkaram. Truth alone is your protector, but understanding the truth is very difficult because it takes a lot of time, patience, effort, curiosity, and a lot more. So if you would like to know the truth about Shivalingam, invest your time in it, invest your effort in it. And the bottom line is, Iti Sarvam Shivam. And as always, thanks for watching.